showdown. The most dominant program in tournament history is primed to make another run with All-American Paige Beckers against the Duke Blue Devils in the Sweet 16. Earlier today on this floor, the number one seed in this region, USC. A nail biter of a win over Baylor. Juju Watkins scoring 30 points. The freshman has the Trojans in the Elite Eight. So here's how things are shaping up on the right side of your bracket. Iowa and LSU, the early game on ESPN Monday night, followed by USC and the winner of this one. Hi, everyone, and welcome courtside. Here at Moda Center, I'm Beth Mullins, along with Debbie Antonelli. Angel Gray is with us as well. Our lineup of All-Americans all day long ends right here with the nightcap as we send that final team off to the Elite Eight. It's UConn and it's Duke. Well, you mentioned it, Beth. It's uh, the winningest program in the NCAA tournament, and it's led by great players. And when you have great players and a coach in Gino Oriema who knows how to put it all together, the byproduct of that is outstanding offensive execution and discipline for 40 minutes. Yep. So Angel Reese passed the baton off to Caitlin Clark, who passed it off to Juju Watkins, and she passes it off to our Xfinity Most Reliable Player in the nightcap. It's Paige Beckers. Paige is complete and elite in most of her skill set. On the offensive end, she can make every play, every shot. She's unselfish. And she's got length and athleticism. She's got a jump shot with elevation. And she can read the second level. She also makes plays on the right side of the box score. When you look at what she did in the second round, 32 points. That was her fifth game with over 30 this season. And I think she's going to put a big number on the board tonight, too. Yeah, and a guy who knows a lot about elite players has high praise for Paige Beckers, none other than her head coach, Gino Oriam, and Angel's got that story. Yeah, absolutely. Paige Beckers has been spectacular in this tournament, a combined 60 points and 21 rebounds. Actually, Dawn Staley said she might be the most impressive and elite player to ever grace our game. So what has Gino thought about his All-American? That brings us to our Need to Know, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. You know, we have the best player in America. And, you know, just saying that because the numbers in this world of analytics, the numbers say that she is. And the whole stat sheet says that she is. And everybody that watched knows it. Yes, her efficiency is what is most impressive. But Coach told us she likes taking good shots. I want her to take bad shots, be more adventurous. Let's see if, if we can get ready for that show, ladies. Looking forward to that, Angel. On the other side for the Duke Blue Devils, Reagan Richardson. Back-to-back 20-point -back outings making her shots here in the postseason. Yeah, and don't sleep on the Duke defense. This is an athletic group of physical defense, and Reagan Richardson has been hot. The last two games in double figures, the three prior to that not. She's been hot scoring, and they're going to need all of her offense to pull this upset. They've got youth on their side. They've got better depth than Connecticut. All five starters on the floor for the Huskies get used to seeing them because they all play over 30 minutes per game. The first set has Richardson running the point. So here she is. They try the pick and roll, and it's bothered by Ashlyn Shade, who got into the passing lane. The starting lineups brought to you by Capital One, Arnold Becker's Mule Shade and Aaliyah Edwards, Nika Mule is their all-time assist leader, career, single season, and single game, the best distributor they've had. What's gonna be interesting to me in watching the Duke defense is can they speed UConn up? Because when you take them deep into the shot clock, they got that, a bucket getter on any level. The starting lineup for the Blue Devils, Jackson, Donovan, Mayer, Richardson, and Kennedy Brown. We're going to see if they can push some pace today, Debbie, and see if they can wear the Huskies down a bit. Foul trouble would be a major problem for Connecticut. Running the flex. Duke is on the last set right here. Then they get the isolation inside with their quickness and their speed. That's what they got to do in attacking inside. Jaden Donovan tries to wrap around. There's a look at Gino Oriema. 39 seasons at Connecticut. 22 of those have ended with trips to the Final Four. 11 of those with national championship rings, six of those unblemished records. 
the best in the postseason you in know, history. When you look at their numbers, it's hard to pick one that <laughs> overshadows another. It's so impressive. But the thing that I admire the most is the execution and the discipline for 40 minutes. Well, the other thing to note is it's their longest championship drought that they've had since that first title in 95. That's a hungry bunch. And the jumper is good for the Blue Devils. They run a lot of five out motion, does UConn. They're comfortable at their pace. You gotta try to speed them up and it's hard to do. Off the Edwards miss, here comes Donovan. One of the most highly touted freshmen coming out of high school. Oh, got a pocket pick there. And a whistle and a foul. There's a look at Carol Lawson. Now in her fourth season at Duke. After starring for Pat Summit at the University of Tennessee, she won an Olympic gold medal when she got into the WNBA, where she also won a championship and will be one of the assistant coaches for Team USA this summer in Paris. Arnold swatted. Blocked by Delaney Thomas, another one of the freshmen. They have six newcomers this year, Debbie. And there are four freshmen, the top 10 class this year. I mean, all spread out, attempting to take you one-on-one. -on -one. What Coach Oriema is doing is just sizing you up right now, right? Wants to see what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. Then he's going to deep digger into his playbook. That's usually how it goes. Tough shot for Beckers, which is exactly what Lawson talked to us about yesterday. We, we want to make them all tougher on her, and we want her to play both ends of the floor. I think Duke needs to establish their interior game first. Play inside out. Richardson short on the shot and a collision. Injuries have already been a massive problem for Connecticut. Five players who would have either started or been heavy in their rotation lost for the season. Keep in mind, 6'3", Aaliyah Edwards off the slice cut right there by Mule, who doesn't really look to score. She's thinking pass. But that's where Duke has an advantage. They have more depth. And they've turned the ball over, I think, three times in their five possessions. Yeah, they took it away, gave it right back. Shade trying to go to work, and she turns it over. So a little sloppy to start here. The one thing that Carol Lawson, you see, she's telling her team to settle down. I, I think she has to in ways that only she can do, take the decision making out of her young team and run the sets that they need to run to get the ball where it needs to be, especially early on. Dana Mayer gets it back from Kennedy Brown, and a whistle off the ball and an offensive foul called. It's a simple concept, Beth, called jump to the ball, and that's exactly what Nika Mule did to draw that foul. She just beat Delaney Thomas to the spot. First on Thomas. Just moved the ball so quickly. Ends back up with Shade. Rebounded by Mule. Ten on the shot clock. Nika thought about the three, passed it up. And now Arnold weaving her way inside. Mayor has had the Paige Beckers matchup, and you see how fluid UConn is even without Paige Beckers getting a touch every time down the floor. UConn will switch in their man-to-man. -man. Brown can't knock that down. 6'6", okay. six, six, Kennedy Brown has made six triples in her career, or in her Duke career. That's what I mean about decision-making. Because you know what, Coach Oriema's over there going, there's a reason why you're open, and I'm going to let you shoot that. I'm going to dictate the shots I want you to take. That's the way UConn has typically done it. Boy, that's a tough one right there on Duke. That's Delaney Thomas. She's got to go out. Two personal fouls. Well, the Huskies, winners of the Big East again this year, regular season and tournament. Edwards knocks it down. Mule with her second assist.
Richardson thought about it. Steps away from the defender and hits. Craig and Richardson, 25 points in the first round against Richmond, and then a career-high 28 against Ohio State in the second round for Duke. She had a total of 53 points in the tournament coming into the game. The prior three, she had a total of 15. So she's really picked it up in the NCAA. And he pulled off the biggest upset so far over the Buckeyes as Paige Becker's hangs and hits. And they've had that option to invert her to the block with Mayer on her, who's a smaller point guard. And they're just patient about running their stuff. She starts out the night two for three. Not only does UConn switch, they switch to steal. They jump switch those switches, which means they're not just playing a soft recover. Jackson forced the three. Mayer with the rebound. For a Duke side that finished in seventh place in the ACC this year, but now knocking on the door of the Elite Eight. Mayor, Edwards got a piece of that one. You haven't put any pressure on Aaliyah Edwards yet if you're Duke. I mean, that's the one player that they can ill afford to foul out of the game. Edwards, strong inside, muscles it up and in over Brown at 6'6". I mean, just too strong, catches it with two feet in the paint, too deep to be able to contest. 6'3", senior out of Canada. She's playing with a new face mask today. The broken nose suffered in the Big East tournament. She missed a couple of games for Connecticut, but then returned for the NCAA tournament. Beckers ties her up and turns them over. Well, Beckers can shoot the three. She's going to put pressure on you in the transition game, but then when she inverts to the block, how about a little low post move? 8-2 UConn run in the last three minutes. Brought to you by Geico. Here's our uh, All-Americans in action today. Caitlin Clark, 29 and 15. Juju, a 30 spot. And Angel Reese, another double-double. Great work from Flage Johnson as well in that big LSU win over UCLA. So Monday night, we've got Clark and Reese again in a championship rematch. Will it be Juju and Beckers on Monday night in the second game? UConn off to the early lead here. You know how you think that you're going to, you know, sit down on the couch and watch the Iowa LSU game, put your feet up and enjoy a good basketball game? I think people all over the country are going to be standing on their feet, yelling throwing, at the TV, yelling at the TV <laughs> and excited about watching that one. That's what, what's going to happen with uh, the Caitlin Clark and the Angel Reese and Company show. Debbie, you and I have been doing this a long time. You, you 28, little, you, 28, 28. You a little longer than me since you're older, but um, have we have <laughs> we seen or felt the kind of electricity for a non-Final Four night no. that we're going to have? No way. I, I mean, don't even believe so. The whole tournament, really, yeah. not just the later rounds. I, it's been so impressive. You know, I've always said the product is the narrative. The product's always been good. The ancillary things around yeah. the game has got to continue to evolve, especially economically. When the first 50 years of Title IX was about opportunity, the next 50 should be about investment. Yeah. And it's going to require a mindset shift. But I think we'll be ready to do it. Tomorrow, you've got an unbeaten team trying to advance in South Carolina. You've got what Oregon State and NC State, I don't believe either was ranked to start the season, nope. have made huge strides this year. And of course, Texas and what Vic Schaefer has done without his best player who went out before Christmas in Rory Harmon, but Madison Booker and that crew, an opportunity to get them to the Final Four. Six turnovers for Duke, yet UConn has not been able to capitalize on it. Still a two possession game for the Blue Devils. They've got to settle in here and get some shots on the rim. Richardson coming off the screen, off the dribble and off the window. Four points for her. Paige Beckers, two for four to open up here in the first quarter for Connecticut. Final two minutes. Mule has to make herself a threat. You want 
to make Mule take shots if you're Duke. And you've got to come with a long closeout on Shade. She's 10 for 20 in the NCAA tournament from three. Duke trying to shorten the game here, taking some time off the shot clock on the top of the floor. But if you're going to do that, you have to be able to execute. The other part of that is I do think it takes the decision making out for Kara Loss's team. UConn forces another tough shot, approaching one minute to go and just three baskets so far in the quarter for the Blue Devils. Carol Loss's team averages more turnovers than assists as a team. It's a very, very small positive assist turnover, or turnover margin, I should say, but they have a negative assist turnover ratio. That's why I keep talking about decision making. Mayer off the bounce, kicks it out, looking for a three. Air ball, that won't reset the shot clock, and then Enzo misses a gimme. Duke shooting 27%, and yet UConn has not been able to pull away. Becker's Mule, wide open. Hard off the back iron. You make Mule hit a shot before you change your defensive coverage on her. Yeah, UConn's just 38% so far in the ball game. And they can basically hold for one here. Go one, four low, flatten it out. Don't bring two to the ball. Let Paige go one on one. Beckers uses the screen, gets into the lane. He made her fade away, and then Emspo gets the rebound. Lowest point total in a first quarter this season for the Blue Devils, and yet they're within striking distance. 10 to 6. We'll hear from Carol Lawson when we come back. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Low scoring first quarter, Angel Gray catching up with Kara Lawson. Coach, six turnovers in that, fir that first quarter. Just a message to your team about settling in. Yeah, just got to take care of the ball better. Um, offensively, we've got to get into our actions quicker, so hopefully we can do that in the second quarter. Three for 12 from the field. How can you generate more offense in the second and moving forward? I thought in the second half of that first quarter, we got some quality looks. We got some open threes. We just didn't knock them down. It's a long game. You know, I think the, the margin's still manageable for us, and we'll see if we can get going on offense in the second quarter. Thank you, Coach. The Duke Blue Devils, their NCAA tournament history, 26th appearance all time, 18th trip to the Sweet 16. And uh, under former head coach Gail Gestenkors, Four Final Four appearances, two trips to the National Championship game. So a program that has had tremendous success. And they are seeking that elusive National Championship. Not too much damage done with their lowest scoring point total of the season because it was also UConn's poorest first quarter of the year. Yeah, she can't reclaim that after she turned it over. Kanawa yeah, into Luke, the game. Alucci, the freshman from Boston, the ACC sixth player of the year. So as poorly as I would say both teams have executed so far, including Duke turning the ball over seven times, Coach Lawson has got to feel pretty good about a two-possession game. Paige Beckers, two for five so far in the ball game for Paige. Shade blocked. Akanawa, been a big spark off the bench. Couldn't hold on to it. Two on one. Missed opportunity there for Duke. And, and you hear Carol Lawson just shouting out to the team, hey guys, settle down. This is a group not much experience in this type of situation with all the newcomers. And what a job by Edwards, and she goes down hard. And she immediately grabs for her left knee and is taking off her face mask. Oh, boy. You know, 
Wow. All four other players for UConn sprint down there to help their teammate up. They've been through a lot. You know, and, and O'Connell was going to come out of the game. She's turned the ball over twice, and she fumbled a, a two-on-one opportunity. So she needs to settle in. Hopefully for her, it was just neon hardwood and not any kind of twist. Of course, they've already lost AZ Fudd, Diana Patterson, Caroline Ducharme, Jenna el and Aubrey Griffin to injuries all out. And unavailable to, no matter how deep they go into the tournament. This is what I wanted Duke to do from the very beginning. Go inside to Kennedy Brown and challenge Edwards on the inside. See if you can pick up a foul. Edwards up to that challenge. Five on the shot clock. And then a travel. Too many in street clothes from the UConn perspective, but they are there rooting on their teammates. Duke has 18 possessions in the game, Debbie, and they've turned it over half of those. But their defense is keeping them in it at this end of the floor. And that's going to be an offensive foul. Edwards trying to set the screen. So that's one. So now for Duke, you go right back at her, right? Can you challenge her on the inside? Kennedy Brown's got a post up strong. Back to Jackson. Oh my goodness. So much hesitation by the Blue Devils, yep. right? I mean, young, hesitating. I mean, the pace hasn't even indicated anybody getting a sweat going yet. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Beckers can start to. Uh, putting her footprint on this one. Drives into the lane and draws the foul. First free throws of the ball game. Almost three minutes into this second quarter. And that's the first foul on Kennedy Brown. Page is an 84% free throw shooter. You know, she's a 50, 40, 80 for her career, which is a really impressive stat. There's not many Division I players that have ended their career like that, and she's missed two in a row, and I'm sure that doesn't happen very often. And is that the second foul on Beckers? Yes, it is. She looks over the bench and says, I'm all right. And it's not as though Gino has many options over there. Yeah. Who are you looking at over there? Are there right. three other players in yes. uniform, right? Correct. We see a little zone, maybe, you know? I mean, you got to protect from foul yeah. trouble. Tries to box out. Duke gets a hold of it. And now Mule. Good baseline, nice slash to the basket for Beckers and one. You've got to be ready on the weak side for that cut when Mule drives baseline because she's going to pass. She's not going to score. This is a great drive, brings two to the ball. No one even near Paige Beckers on a beautiful cut to the bucket to get into the vision of Mule off the pass. Not bad for your power forward, right, Debbie? Yeah. She, she's a power she's, forward. She's playing the four right now for UConn. Well, That's six foot. It's a, it could be a problem on defense if someone decided to attack her and post her up. I'm not sure that Duke, because they don't have you know that kind of size. As long as Aaliyah Edwards is on the floor, she can play the four. But she also can do that. She can get up the line and anticipate. It's not a problem on offense for her to play the four, no. really. I mean, maybe on baseline out of bounds play, she's got to know one through four and how to execute those. But otherwise, it's the way Coach Oriema moves his players around 
in their five out motion. She's taken a cue from Chris Paul in the NBA and how he deals with bigger defenders. Donovan, shot clock winding down. Don't get it up. 11th turnover for Duke. Duke has three baskets. And they don't have one yet this quarter. Now remember, they went on an 11 minute scoring drought against Ohio State in the second round and still won the game. Rallied by 16 down to win it. Beckers. Can't add to the lead, and then that's going to be a foul on Jaden Donovan. Her second. Akanawa will come in. Donovan, uh, Donovan will depart. the 6-6 Brown who bothers the shot. Here comes Duke. Let's see if they can get an easy one in transition. Mayer drops it off for Brown. Good help by Kiki Arnold, uh, KK Arnold to get there. And then taken right back for Duke. Fresh 30. Boy, Coach Lawson has a lot of hand signals over there, and I think she's called about 15 different sets trying to get her team something going yeah. offensively. Jackson, mid-range. At least that's a good shot. Mm -hmm. Three for 17. <laughs> Beckers. One of those nights where both teams are just struggling to find a way to get anything going. Can they do it with their defense? Arnold runs right into Brown, who holds her ground. How is that not a foul? Oh, and, oh boy. Wow. And then they, they call the reach in there. We are going to take the timeout, and I know you're going to take it with us. With 4.56 to go here in the first half. They need to double their score by the half. <laughs> Riding a wave of L's optimism. Cheer up, ladies. We still got four minutes and 50 seconds to get you some highlights for, yeah. for halftime. And uh, let's see out of the timeout if either side can get it going. Paige Beckers with uh, seven points on three of nine shooting. And uh, that last basket was the fourth for the uh, entire Duke team in this first half. Held ball. I'll stay with UConn. I mean, this is Duke's tempo, right? And they have had a chance to play eight players where UConn is stuck with the same five. But they've got to get into the depth of UConn, and they haven't been able to do that yet. And it's challenging. Not many people can, but you got to put some pressure on them. Paige Duke has got two. Leah Edwards has got one. They haven't made a substitution, Connecticut has, uh, not this entire first half. But with the pace the way it is, nobody looks gas. And the timeouts are long. Yeah. Pull up Richardson around and out. Brown tries to tag it. And Beckers has it. The other thing, too, is Duke has missed 15 shots. And they have offensive rebound at half of them. So they got to stay on the glass. And that one finds a way down for Edwards. Richardson off the Econova drive. Ashlyn Shade, freshman out of Noblesville, Indiana. 26 points for Ashlyn, their first round win over Jackson State. The one thing about UConn is the ball always moves. It never gets stuck. You know, it's not a big ISO ball team. Even late in the shot clock, they might bring two to the ball, but otherwise they move it. 
Mule, the nice pocket pass to Edwards and one. When they get three sides, it's usually a bucket. The ball switches sides of the floor three times. And then you go right down the middle third. Richardson late getting there. Her first. The beautiful pass by the all-time assist leader, Nika Mule. How about that? You think of all the good point guards oh, they've had man. there. Nika's done it in four years. She said she heard from Sue Bird and Mariah Jefferson, right? Two great point guards. Her teammates praise her for thinking the game and seeing the game so well. Senior from Croatia who has decided she's not coming back next year, neither is Aaliyah Edwards, but of course Paige Beckers is returning for one more season. What you got for us, Angel? Well, I just think it's cool, the respect just from everyone that has been before her for Nika Mule. She said Mariah Jefferson texted her the night before the game and congratulated her. That's how much confidence they have in her. But for Sue Bird, she said it was from an unknown number. It was a FaceTime, <laughs> and she was in a towel recovering from the game. So she did respond. Sue Bird is a legend, so she's happy she took the call. <laughs> on KK Arnold, her first. It's gonna take a little getting used to to watch the Olympics this summer without Sue Bird on the team. Now in retirement. Oh, and a foul on Edwards. That's, That's her second. So she and Beckers with two each. Now Coach Oriema would typically have to make a decision about subbing, but I think, and that's a foul. She caught her Good on call. the hand. I think he goes with it, because you got to trust him, right? This first time that Duke's been to the free throw line. They're 0 for 8 from the three-point line. This is their first trip to the free throw line. McConnell able to knock it down, and New England Player of the Year out of Worcester Academy, a real late bloomer. Averages about 21 minutes a game off the bench, and she's their leading rebounder at 5'10". Sixth player in the ACC this year. Brings incredible energy and defense off the bench. And speed. She's fast. They've done a good job limiting Ashlyn Shade outside the three-point line has Duke's defense. Shot clock winding down. Arnold's got to go. Gets into the lane. Around and out. Two minutes to go in the first half. UConn staying in the sagging man. It's going to be tougher to score in the paint because as long as Duke can't score outside the three-point line, Connecticut's defense is going to shrink. Richardson just inside the line. That's short. Edwards had it, lost it, uh -oh. and is that the third on Aaliyah Edwards? Uh-oh. With 1.42 to go in the first half, UConn is forced to make its first substitution of the game. She had a hold of her leg and tripped her, and that's a foul. Edwards goes out. Ice Brady comes on. Even the free throws are tough to come by right now for Duke. I mean, Duke has been number one. They've gone back and forth with NC State at the end of the season in scoring defense. And that's one way to look at a, a measure of a good defense. I like field goal percentage defense better myself than yep. scoring D because that has a lot to do with pace. But they're right around 58 points a game, both teams, NC State and Duke, to go back and forth between one and two in scoring D in the ACC. Beckers will look to create stumbles, loses her footing. Able to hold on to the ball to force the held ball, but it goes to Duke. 
UConn held to just 38% shooting in the first half. Neither team in this day and age, how crazy, has a three-pointer well, in this first half. You know, this is what happens in the NCAA tournament in the, in the postseason. The game shrinks, possessions are less, transition is harder. Yeah. You've got to execute in the quarter court on both sides of the ball. And you need great guard play. Under a minute. Innsbow left unattended. I'd put Ice Brady in as much ball screen action go. as possible. Jackson, no. Oh, what a play by Paige Beckers to get the box out and then snag the loose ball and then feed it to KK Arnold. Best sequence of this first half, and it's Paige Beckers. Beckers with the board, no outlet. She sprints it up the middle of the floor. Good transition bucket by UConn. Step back, Jackson. Good, first three of the game for either side. UConn can hold for one. Wasn't it 20 to 12 against Stanford in the NCAA tournament one year at halftime? Beckers, that won't go. And that will put an end to the first half of play. UConn leading Duke 23 to 13. The Blue Devils just five baskets in that first half. As we send it over to Angel Gray. Duke's, Duke's defense was a story coming into this game, but it's your defense that has been most impressive in this first half. Holding them to five field goals, what do you like most about your defense? I like how we're applying the pressure. We're not, we're speeding them up and getting them out of sorts on their offensive end. I have here eight assists on 11 made field goals, including that nice dime by Paige at the end right. as well. How would you describe the connection offensively? Yeah, I think we're still a bit stagnant on offense, but you know, we're still making reads, still making the right the right reads, and I think that we just need to pick it more up. All right, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. First half, welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Oh, beautiful day here in Portland at Moda Center for Duke and UConn. Well, both sides would uh, like to hit the reset button after that low scoring first half and get a fresh start to the second half because hey, they're only 20 minutes away from moving on to the Elite Eight for the winner of this one and a matchup with USC. Beth Mowens, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray, and Paige Beckers, the All-American, did do what she's supposed to do in that first well, half. I mean, she's an All-American, and, you know, the game had some bumps here and there, and it wasn't smooth, but put the ball in Paige Beckers' hands, and you know exactly what you can get. You can get scoring. You can get offense, you can fuel the run by Wendy's. Take a look at Paige right here, working off this ball screen action in the middle third. Aliyah Edwards sets a nice screen. It gives Paige enough room to have some separation. Nika Mule on the penetration. The weak side does not see the cutters, but Paige Beckers finds a lane, gets to the rim, gets an and one opportunity. And then this is just taking a little bump, creating some space. And then how about a little no look dime right here? The easiest bucket for either team was that transition basket by UConn. That's Fuel of the Run brought to you by Wendy's. This is the game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Fewest uh, points in a first half all season for either side. In fact, the lowest scoring half of basketball for Connecticut in five years. But they find themselves up 10 as we open up this third quarter. Aliyah Andrews in foul trouble. She opens up this third quarter back out on the floor with three fouls. The other four starters played all 20 minutes, and Aaliyah played 18 minutes. So, see if Duke can try and wear him down a little bit in this second half. Beckers will knock down her first shot attempt, and it's a three. Just when I didn't think anybody's arm was going to fall off in this one, we might have an arm falling off in the second half. Beckers now with 12. She and Edwards have 22 of their 26 points tonight. Duke held to just six baskets with 13 turnovers in the first half. Kennedy Brown, offensive rebound and a yeah. nice stick back. You gotta be aggressive in the Edwards matchup with those three fouls. I think that's the first low post bucket that Duke has had. Oh, Becker's heat check. Hey, 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 all right. 
Those of you that stuck around, be glad you did. It's getting ready to heat up. Troopers, if you're still there. <laughs> but if you're Kara Lawson at halftime, Debbie, say, hey, we we trailed by as much as 13 in that first half. That's nothing. We That's came right. back from 16 down against Ohio State the other day. I mean, an 11-minute scoring drought, and we're able to beat the Buckeyes in Columbus. See, Kennedy Brown is 6'6", has got to finish those. You can't catch it any closer to the basket. What's at stake is the final spot in the Elite Eight. All four one seeds have advanced. Travel called on Shade. Paige just with a little dribble handoff right here. That's a lot of separation in space. That's a couple of threes for her. She's got the only two that UConn has. One of nine three-point shooting for Duke. KK with the strip and the breakaway for Arnold. Largest lead now of the ball game for UConn. Arnold with a reach in. UConn's defense right here. Mayor's got to be tighter with the basketball. There again, jumping over the top of the screen, making sure that you go over, not under. Nice play right there by KK Arnold to get an easy bucket. She's had a couple of baskets in transition. That was her second foul. Mayor. Edwards got to be careful. Can't pick up that fourth. And they force another turnover. I just see UConn staying in the sagging man-to-man. -man. You know, like there's times when they can jump switch or jump up the passing lane, but otherwise, until, you, you know, Duke starts knocking down some perimeter shots and they're one for nine outside the three-point line. Carol Lawson goes to her bench here quickly in the third. She'll bring in a couple of freshmen, Akanawa and Delaney Thomas. And so this is the most aggressive front line right here when you put Delaney Thomas in with her 6'3 frame and Akanawa, who is very aggressive on the glass. Really good rebounding guard. Arnold to the rim for the lay-in. Freshman out of Wisconsin. Averaged nine points a game since she entered the starting lineup after that last injury to Aubrey Griffin. Brown touches inside, one make and two misses here in the third. Duke is two for eight on layups or shots at the rim. Tough to knock out a three seed like that. Arnold will try for three. Nothing but blue jerseys on the glass. Throw it in there. Thomas flashes high. McConaughey, tough shot. Edwards had it, knocked loose. Alucci gets into the defender. See, she's an aggressive rebounder, and she takes a three and follows her shot and stays in the play. Back door to Beckers. Comes out the opposite side with it. Kennedy Brown doing a good job boxing out. A couple of possessions keeping Edwards off the glass, but Edwards really can't go hard to the offensive boards. Got five rebounds now, does Kennedy. Richardson hasn't been able to get it going tonight like she did in the first two rounds when she scored over 20 points and an offensive foul on Duke. It's on a Conawa. That's her first. Edwards has not made a three all season. Trying to post up inside, gets a touch, going to work on Brown. Stepped on the end line? No, they're gonna get a foul on Kennedy. 
her second. What? Sorry, uh, not sure what that was. Arnold gets into the lane, kicks it back out to the mule. Beckers goes up with the right hand. Here comes Duke. Thomas. Lawson looks pretty upset over there about the way her team's executing. McConnell will try for three. Around and out. Brown, good rebound. Missed another layup. That's her third one of this quarter. And then she commits the foul. Her third. 33-19. UConn over Duke here in the third for a spot in the Elite Eight. were not allowed to play college basketball. So that group, the only one in college basketball in history, men or women, to win four straight national championships. And of course, for Gino, the most, the most, the second most, and the most. 23 and seven, just in sweet 16 games. And did Edwards just pick up her fourth? Yes, she did. Setting a screen, she gets number four. That's the second screening foul she's been called for off the ball. And is this a big moment now for Ice Brady moving forward? Sat out last year after getting hurt. Big time recruit coming out of high school. And the Huskies I mean, will try and press on without Edwards for extended minutes. Can you not see the defense is in the passing lane? Because that's what Carol Lawson's getting ready to say to Mayor as she takes her out of the game. Duke's going with two bigs. They got an opportunity to take advantage of interior play, and they continue to make poor decisions with the basketball. That's why you and me are sitting over here, not on that side. <laughs> Beckers gets a kind roll. 17 now for Page. Another takeaway what for Connecticut. Great, what a great read by Nika Mule. Beckers hesitates a couple times, has it not loose? Boy, Okonawa is an absolute defensive menace. Getting hands on every pass in every passing lane. I mean, it's a lock and trail effort. Chasing Paige Beckers off of all that screening action. She's got one of the quicker defenders on the yeah. floor on her. She still could shake. Beckers drains the inbound. Hardly touched the rim on that one. 19 now for Page on eight of 16 shooting, 50% from the floor. Coach Oriama telling his team back off. They've only made one triple. Reagan Richardson's the one you need to keep an eye on. And there she is, wide open. One for 12. From deep, KK bumped on the drive. Situational offense so important when you get to this position in your season. That's a great screen by Ice Brady. And Paige Beckers yeah. just comes off the screen in space. Boy, for, for Beckers, you, you mentioned the 50% shooting, 40% from deep, 80% from the free throw line for a career. I mean, it's tough enough to do that in a season. Right. That point guard on their four-time championship team, Mo Jefferson, I think, is the, is the last and perhaps the only Husky to ever do it. That was one of your finds yes. on the interwebs. 
Hey, the NCAA Women's Championship continues uh, on the uh, road to the Final Four, April 5th to the 7th. Championship game will be on ABC Sunday afternoon this year. And of course, our Elite Eight games, doubleheader tomorrow, doubleheader Monday. 20 point advantage for Connecticut, under three to go here in the third. Hey guys, it's Brock Purdy here supporting our women's basketball team. The stars are out. Kevin Durant wanted to come check out Maddie Booker. What really jumps out to you about Juju's game? She's just special. People are more excited about the women's side than the men's side, and I think that's obviously something that's really never been the case before. Oh, the madness is about to kick into high gear. The Elite Eight on your right side of the bracket on Monday night. It's Iowa and LSU 7 Eastern on ESPN. And the winner of our matchup here will face Juju Watkins and Southern Cal for a spot in the Final Four in Cleveland. Beth Mullins, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray with you here in Portland. It has been a struggle for the Duke Blue Devils. Just eight baskets so far in the game. They're 19 points as a team, matched right now by Paige Becker's 19 points. You know, we came on the air and I talked about Duke's decision making and why it would be critical in this game. And they have 18 turnovers. And while the offense is in front of Carol Lawson's bench, she's going to try to take all the decision making out. So they're running some sets right now. The last two sets, they got good looks. They caught the ball on a quality catch. This time they knocked down a triple. And when you get in the huddle right now for Duke, it's not always only about executing. It's about having a little bit of pride and a little desire to play a little tougher. Duke rallied from 16 down to win. We've had three games like that in this NCAA tournament. Middle Tennessee down 18 to upset Louisville, and Iowa State rallied from down 20 to beat Maryland. That's what Duke is banking on again. They've trailed by as many as 20 tonight. If they can score here, they can put some game pressure on UConn. Offensive foul on the screen, Emsbo. That's her first. Richardson will return. Reagan is three of 10 shooting six points after she had 25 in the first round and 28 in the second round. three-point shooter. She just doesn't take very many. Richardson knocked loose by Beckers. Esbo to the left for the turnaround. Final minute of this third quarter. Arnold. Good rebound for Donovan. Head up, looking for a runner. Got to score right here. Donovan kicks it out for Mayer, looking for three, and it's good. And finally, the Blue Devils have a double-digit scoring quarter. After being held under 10 points in the first and second. Last time they had last possession, this is what Paige Beckers did. Just dribble it out and go one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see if Ice Brady brings the screen. Mule to make the decision here. Bad pass, good defense, turnover. I mean, Coach Oriama took the ball out of Paige's hands so he could get it back to her, and Nika Mule turns it over. Good defense by Richardson. Right in front of him, too. That's when you do not make eye contact. Almost passed it right to him. <laughs> Duke to beat the buzzer. Richardson good if it goes. We're going to talk to Gino or Emma when we come back. 
his Huskies 10 minutes away from the Elite Eight. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Let's send it over to Angel, who just caught up a moment ago with Gino. Coach, you didn't look too pleased at the last couple of series from your team. Yeah. What do you want better executed? Uh, well, I think we got our signals crossed a couple times, and, uh, you know, we were on a nice little run there, you know, a nice little roll. We had our rhythm there, and uh, I think we just got confused a little bit. And, uh, you know, when, you know, we're getting a little bit tired, too, you know, so uh, this time out at the end of the quarter comes at a real good time. Uh, we just got to get our bearings back again, but I, li I like the way we're attacking. I, you know, I love the way we're playing defense. We just gotta, we just gotta finish it off now. Thanks so much for your time, Coach. Paige Beckers, she can get you in rhythm in a hurry. Eight for 16 from the floor. She's got 19 points. Put the ball in her hands, and she creates space for herself and others. Nice jumper. Working off the baseline out of bounds. And look at the acceleration off the staggered screen on the weak side. We should put a tracker on her, Beth, yeah. and see uh, how far she's running in these games. Put in some put miles. Two miles, a little mileage. <laughs> she and KK Arnold and Nika Mule have played the full 30 minutes. My goodness. And the Blue Devils have just turned it over a 20th. Time. Okay, this is a good teaching point. Mare is in the middle of the floor, and she's trying to make a pass to the wing. You get to decide what side of the floor you're going to go to. If you're going to pass it to the left side, then take the lane line extension. Get to that point, shorten your angle, and make the pass. Duke ended that third quarter on an 8-3 run to try and chip away. Beckers! 21 for Page. Ems Bow with a nice catch and finish. Huskies got knocked out last year in the Sweet 16 that ended a 14-year run at the Final Four. <laughs> Trying to start another one. Now Mayer does a good job defensively at forcing Beckers into the screen. That created the turnover. So while she turns it over on one end, she helps make a play on the defensive end on the other side. Now watch right here. She's going to jump. She's pushing Paige into the screen. And then it's good hustle right there by Emsbo to hit the deck. Five on the shot clock. Beckers has to boogie. And it's knocked right back out to Connecticut in a fresh 20. Slipped by Brady. Finds Mule, checks the puppies, short. Richardson finds a seam. Really nice Chip tape. and away. Got it to 13. Got to get three stops in a row, three scores. Then you put some pressure on UConn. Huskies still playing without Aaliyah Edwards. Picked up her fourth foul early in that third quarter. Stays on the bench to start the fourth. Get Ice Brady some good minutes right here to build a little confidence. Arnold, who's scored in double digits, spins and hits. How about the footwork? For 5'9", KK Arnold, the score over 6'5", Camilla Ensbo. It's nice. Akala around Beckers, Page got a piece of it, and Mule has it. Mule fatigue setting in, Might maybe, be. for UConn. Becker's hunched over here on the near side, trying to catch her breath. And then Connell will bump her. Watch KK Arnold right here. He's going to turn the corner. He's going to get in the paint on the switch. Emsbo's got this, right? 
That's just beautiful, playing off two feet, using the pivot to reverse out of that and get a shot over the top of 6-5. If you watch UConn, they cut hard. They're playing right now with two freshmen and a redshirt freshman on the floor. Here's one of them, Arnold blocked. Five on the shot. Huskies a bit disjointed on this inbound. Looking for Becker's taken away. Good read by Donovan. Off to the races. This is a chance right here for Duke to make a run. I mean, they got to do it right now. Beckers cuts inside. They made it. A tough shot. Numbers for Duke the other way. Okanawa never got a handle on it. Three on O. Oh. Brady. Wasn't that nice of Nika Mule to give Ice Brady the ball? First basket. She had Paige on the right. Mule now eight assists, six rebounds, three points. You know, that's a four-point swing right there, because yep. that's two on a layup that Duke should have had, and it's a layup they gave up on the other end. That's a big swing when you're trying to make this run. That's on Shade. Reagan Richardson, who has been averaging 26 and a half in the tournament, only eight. Hey, don't forget the uh, men's basketball Elite Eight going on tonight on TBS. For more info on game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. It's that uh, Clemson Alabama men's game going on. Tight game at the half right now after UConn men won earlier tonight. They are going back to the Final Four. They had a 30 0 run yeah, in I, that game. That I, is I had Illinois the first weekend of the men's tournament in Omaha, and they could play. They are a very good basketball team, and to see what UConn did to them tonight, wow, it's going to be hard to stop them now. I mean, that, I thought, was a team that might have the opportunity to score yep. with UConn, but nope, no chance. I mean, it's going to be a, a fun one for Danny Hurley and the boys moving forward. Donovan. Okanawa short, good box out for Brady. The Women's Elite Eight starts tomorrow. South Carolina, Oregon State, and NC State, Texas, Debbie, in those two games for spots in the Final Four. Well, Vic Schaefer's team is loaded up on the defensive end. They are aggressive, and they have some tremendous ball pressure, and NC State has quickness in the backcourt. Yeah. That's how they pulled away from Stanford in the second half. And that's going to be a terrific showdown. Undefeated South Carolina and that, or they do it on both ends of the floor in Oregon State with the defense. Drive and an and one opportunity here for Alucci. Can Duke make a run? Akanawa going to shoot free throws when we come back. Check out tonight's star stories brought to you by Honda Page Becker's 21 points, KK Arnold with 12, 48 37. UConn with the lead, they've led by as many as 20. And uh, despite what has been a forgettable evening offensively to this point, Debbie, look at this now for Duke free throws to get this thing down to single digits. 
And a kind of at the line. Expect the full court pressure in spite of 21 turnovers and shooting 33%. They've got this thing to 10. Remember, all the big comebacks in the NCAA tournament so far, including Dukes in the second round. UConn comes out of the timeout with Aliyah Edwards back in the game. You got to go with who you trust right now if you're Coach Oriyama. You got to put her back in. She'll play with four fouls. And Duke can get three stops in a row here, three scores. Beckers, short. Timeouts are going to be incredibly valuable for Connecticut here down the stretch. They have three starters that have played every minute tonight. Beckers gets a block underneath. Kennedy Brown's just had a tough night around the rim. One for eight. Kanawa off the bounce, leaves it off for Brown. Back to Alucci. Another missed layup for Duke. Nice play by Arnold to poke it free. Well, they're gonna rue all these missed layups. Seven for 16 on layups is Duke. Approaching three and a half to go for a spot in the Elite Eight and a date Monday night with Southern Cal, the number one seed in this region. UConn just runs false action, takes time off the clock. Then they get inside the shot clock with three and Duke gets a stop. And then they turn it over. Oh my goodness. 22 turnovers. <laughs> they have just I mean, missed every chance to try and get this thing down into a negotiable number. I mean, I started off the game telling you that this was a team that averages more turnovers than assists. And when you look at the assist numbers, six of them. They have six. Shot clock, blocked, violation. Back-to-back -back stops, but you gotta score. And you'd like to credit UConn's defense for most of the turnovers, but you, you really can't say no. that. Some of them, sure, but. Richardson spins in the lane. Tough shot, knocks it down. And pick up full court. Eight point game. A 7 0 Duke run. You got to give it to the Duke Blue Devils for hanging in there, right? And timeout, UConn. Eight point game. That's three possessions. Two left for Connecticut. It's been ugly, but it's been competitive. Yes. Richardson with a nice spin move right here. Well, now if you're Gino, right, you're, you're using your timeouts to set up an out-of-bounds play to get the ball into Paige Becker's hands to try and get a bucket here to stem the run. I also think for fatigue reasons, I yes. think he might need a timeout here. The one that would be rested would be Edwards, who's been out for 12 minutes with foul trouble. throughout the course of the first half and the second. Earlier tonight, we saw Juju Watkins drop 30 on Baylor in a hard-fought win, 74 to 70. So the Trojans are next for the winner of this game. Of course, all of America will be watching Iowa LSU, the first game Monday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN. I mean, it, it has not been easy for Duke. They've been hanging in there. It's been hard, but they're starting to handle it a little bit better here in the last couple of minutes. You gotta put some game pressure on UConn. Let's see what UConn drew up in the huddle. You wanna play good D here if you're if you're Duke. You 
But you have fouls to give. You only have one team foul. Arnold block. Duke's got it. The push. Richardson on the run. They swing around for a Lucci three. And it's oh. in. Come on. Look at Duke. You got to be kidding me. Two possession game under two minutes to go. And a turnover. Keep the ball in the middle of the floor. The Duke D with a block and then the push. And they make the extra pass. You got to be kidding me. We saw Oregon State knock off Notre Dame the other day. What, they have 25, 26, 26 turnovers? Can Duke do the same? They got 22 turnovers today, and they're right there in it. We need something going to the basket. Richardson, pull up. Long rebound to Duke. And a turnover. Duke has all four timeouts. They have not used any timeouts. You could have used one right there. They might want to use one to make sure they get a good shot the next possession here, if they can. Edwards, big two. How about stepping up and making a shot? How about wanting the ball when the game's on the line? They had missed six shots in a row prior to that. Gives them a little more space. Under a minute to go. Brown. Timeout, Duke, before they get the ball inbounds. Carol Lawson wants to set her D. Back to a two possession game. You got to give it to the Duke kids, right? They're hanging in there. Edwards drives Kennedy Brown back, takes a jumper from the nail. And then Kennedy Brown inside her second basket of the game. Let's send it over to Angel. I was just in that last Duke huddle, and that is a team that believes that they still have time to win this ball game. Carol Lawson looked at them and said, we got here because of our defense. Let's win it that way. We need stops and then go. Believe that you can do it. And you saw them in the last couple of possessions offensively. Can they continue to get stops on defense, though? Well, the leadership of this experienced UConn backcourt of Beckers and Mule, can they stay composed here under pressure? So Paige is inbounding it. She's probably going to get it right back. Arnold That's held a up, jump ball. held ball, Duke ball. <laughs> Coach Oriama cannot believe it. I mean, that's a good play by Duke. He just said you're supposed to throw her the ball back, and yes. they couldn't get it back to her. Jackson back to Okanawa. Leaves it off for Donovan. Elevates. No good. Rebound Edwards. And a foul. That's not a bad foul. Stops the clock. Gives them a chance to set their D. Duke's not in the bonus. That's only the second team foul. That's the fourth personal on Kennedy Brown. UConn will call timeout to advance the ball. A five-point game. <laughs> crazy to think where it we once crazy. were. With Connecticut leading by 20. 39-19. And Duke has just hung around. They're outscoring Connecticut here in the fourth quarter, 18 to eight. So there's the situation with the timeouts, the fouls to give. UConn has the arrow as well as the basketball. Well, I'm Duke. I'm telling the officials, I'm going for a hard trap and a steal. Do not anticipate that I want to foul immediately. I want to get a chance to make a play on the ball first. And if I'm UConn, I'm putting the ball in my best free throw shooter's hands, Paige Beckers. You Beckers got will be the inbounder here. You're going to pass it right back to her as soon as she steps in bounds. Kicked. This is where Duke has used their athleticism to get back in the game with their, their speed and their quickness. Same play, same set, running the same thing. Mule's got to track it down in the backcourt. 
So now I would commit the foul because she's one on one. Here comes the double and yeah. there's a foul. You turn her and then you try to get the steal. And that's a good job by Duke. You turn her and then you get the steal. And if it doesn't happen, you got a foul. And that's a risky play throwing the ball in somebody's backcourt. 30 seconds to go. Still with fouls to give. Oh my goodness, another hell ball. And Gino can't believe it that they're hanging on to it instead of passing it back to Paige. Now the arrow will flip to Duke. You got to get the ball. You were fouled. That is the fourth. So the next one will get Connecticut to the line. I think Duke has managed it pretty well, trying to get a, make a play on the ball, right? Trying to get a steal, and they've tied them up. Now they have the possession now. If you don't get a steal right away, you got a foul. You don't have enough time. Right back to Beckers, and she's fouled. Only two seconds went off the clock. But unfortunately for Duke, that's not who you want on the free throw no. line. Even though she's missed a couple times tonight, statistically, she's their best. She missed two in a row in the first half. 84% on the season. This one right here makes it, well, it's a two possession game anyway. Duke's gonna have to score twice. This makes it a three possession. Paige Beckers, 23 points. And now it's 52 to 45. Let's take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. And it is Beckers. I mean, Becker's moving without the ball. You go underneath. She goes to the dribble handoff. She's going to make you pay. She's going to stick that triple. That's her second three. And then watch this. Sets up the back door. Nika Mule dribbles right at her defender. And that's the indicator to go back door, which she does so nicely. Capital One rewarding performance. We're going to give it to Paige Becker's 23 points on 21 shots. Her sixth consecutive 20-point game, but she's had a lot of them this year, 25 of them uh, before tonight. Duke's got to hurry. Brown stripped away by Beckers. Duke will keep it here, 13 seconds to go. You can get a quick two right here under the basket. Jackson launches short. Beckers. And a foul. And that's going to be on Kennedy Brown, and that'll get Aaliyah Edwards to the free throw line with six seconds to go. And now the Husky fans are on their feet, sensing that they are headed back to the Elite Eight and a date with USC. Usually I say in a physical contest, it's a double ice bath game, but I think you and I are going to need a double ice bath <laughs> after this one. <laughs> double something. <laughs> but it, uh, it came down to a tight one at the finish, at least, after uh, neither side could shoot it particularly well today. But you know what? For Connecticut, as it stands, put this one in the rearview mirror and get ready to face the Pac-12 champions. You know, the most important thing Connecticut needs to do next is rest. More important than the reps. Yep. When you're short on numbers. Beckers is gonna close it out here with 24 points tonight for Connecticut. And the stage is set for an epic Monday night on ESPN in the Elite Eight. LSU and Angel Reese against Iowa and Caitlin Clark. The first game Monday night and in the nightcap, Juju Watkins and USC against Paige Beckers and UConn. Well, that's the matchup I was hoping for in terms of star power around our game to elevate the game. I'm looking forward to that one, Beth. 53 to 45 the final and the Huskies survive and advance.
They forced 23 turnovers, had 14 steals. And so that's how the right side of your bracket is shaping up. It gets underway Monday night, 7 Eastern in Albany, and then back out here, 9 Eastern in Portland. An All-American in every lineup for that one. And uh, Angel Reese has Paige Beckers, or excuse me, Angel Gray has Paige Beckers. <laughs> you get the last spot in the Elite Eight, but Duke made you fight it out in that fourth quarter. What did you learn about how this team had to battle it out? Just our resilience. I think it's kind of what. I think it's kind of what we've been dealing with the entire year with having to battle adversity. Um, this is our second close game in a row, um, so it's really good for us heading into the Elite Eight. But a great victory. That's a great team over there, and they made us work for it. So yeah. And depth not on your side at point, but what are some things that you learned about how this team has to make sure that they win games with not many people coming off the bench? Just a whole lot of mental toughness just showing that. Um, it's, it's been like this the entire season of depth and inconsistency in the lineup. Um, so everybody has to step up. Um, it can be anybody's night on any given night. I mean, we all have confidence in each other. Um, it's, it's next man up. Um, and it's just a lot of resilience, like I said. We get Paige Beckers and Juju Watkins first team All-Americans in this next round. What are you excited about for facing her for the first time? Uh, yeah, she's a great player, a tremendous scorer, um, a freshman at that, so she's an awesome player. Um, I never believed in the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Obviously, the media's got to hype it up, but UConn versus USC, it'll be a great game and a great battle. It's a great team, um, so we'll be preparing for that. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thank you. So the UConn Huskies win it, and they move on to the Elite Eight Monday night against Southern Cal. For our entire crew, Beth Bowens, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray, we'll see you tomorrow on the road to the Final Four.